All right, let's do that. High compression Zs, let's send it. All right, so there's a couple of ways to make high compression a reality on your on the VG30. Um, one of the ways is to use the NA engine, which has a higher compression ratio. The other way is to use the TT engine, but make it high compression. So from the factory, the NA car, the VG30 DE motor, um, and we're talking about 1990 to 96 Zs, that motor was 11 to one. The twin turbo version of the same car uh, was uh, nine to one. And usually when we build high horsepower ZXs, we use an eight and a half to one compression ratio or somewhere therein. So let's talk about why would you want to use high compression in your VG30 DE or DETD. With more compression comes a bigger bang. No, dude, I'm not talking about your girlfriend or your mom. Remember, an engine is an air pump and compression, you're compressing that air combined with gasoline and to make an explosion. So if you have a higher compression ratio, that means basically you are compressing that air fuel mixture more at a higher rate. So the reason you'd want to do this would be to make more power, especially down low. What I mean down low is down low in the RPM bands. And there's the actual formula right there for figuring out what your compression ratio is. And incidentally, NASCAR runs a 12 to one, so it's a fairly high compression ratio motor. On a turbo car, you typically see a lower compression ratio used because you want to prevent pre-detonation, pinging, or knock. Knock will fuck your shit up, so do not let your engine knock. If you got a turbo car, that's from using too low octane usually, and so that brings me to my next point. So in these cars, high compression started getting talked about right about the same time that ethanol was available because ethanol is so good at suppressing knock, you could run a higher compression ratio and more boost to make more power without the drawback of the knock. Knock basically takes your piston and forces it down while it's still coming up. So you fuck up your rods, you could side load your pistons and break a skirt on the side of the piston. I'll show you. Here's a really good description visually of what it looks like. It is absolutely catastrophic, especially to the VE, or I'm sorry, to the VG30. Catastrophic. But here's the deal. If you're using E85, you can quench all or quench all of that knock. You can get rid of all of it. You don't have to worry about it. Um, and you can run a bunch of boosts. So the high compression is thought to be um, a huge benefit. And you know, numbers do speak for themselves. So here's 1100 rear wheel horsepower uh, on the VG30 with 872 foot pounds of torque. And he wouldn't have gotten, or this person wouldn't have gotten to those torque numbers with the lower compression numbers or motor. The question is, should you do it? If it's something you want to do, go for it. I didn't do it, but mm, you can. So it's, you know, there's some reasons for doing it and reasons for not. Uh, I've talked about a few here. Cover some more in the comments, will you?